Welcome to this webinar on the Aerospace Technology Institute program. Thank you for joining. My name is Malcolm Scott, Corporate Development Officer of the ATI. In this webinar, I would like to cover the background to the ATI, the technology strategy that the ATI has produced, and the different opportunities that the ATI program offers to companies, universities, and other research organizations to carry out research or otherwise to get involved in developments related to technology. If you're interested in following up with the ATI after the webinar, I will provide contact details at the end. We will be very pleased to hear from you. The ATI was created by the UK civil aerospace industry and the UK government in 2013 with a lifespan until 2026 it has two main functions. First, to create a technology strategy for the civil aerospace sector in the UK. And second, to develop and support a portfolio of R&D activity to realise the strategy. The research is carried out in industry, academia and research organisations. The government supports the research programme with £150 million per year, and this is matched by industry. With £300 million to invest each year, the overall ATI programme will be worth £3.9 billion in 2026, although its overall value to the economy will be much greater than this, as I will cover later. The picture on this slide shows the front cover of the ATI's most recent strategy, published in November 2019, which can be downloaded from our website. COVID-19 has clearly impacted the sector hugely in recent months, but the fundamentals of the strategy remain valid. The next five slides go into the technology strategy. The technology strategy has three fundamental drivers, sustainability and the move towards a net zero uh, emission economy, mobility, and the introduction of new forms of air transport, such as urban air taxis into the skies, and the competitiveness of the industry in the UK. Going into these three themes in more detail, each contains a number of elements that can be supported through technology or other ATI activity, such as developing networks between different players or investing in research infrastructure. I won't go through all of these in detail, but to take the example of sustainability, the route to net zero will require radically new air vehicles, changes to flight operations to allow optimised routes, new approaches to manufacturing to reduce waste, changes at the airport to eradicate emissions, and last but not least, new power sources which do not require fossil fuels. This last being, of course, one of the hardest challenges of all in sustainable aviation. Solving these challenges will therefore constitute a primary focus of the R&D projects that the ATI expects to support over the coming years. Whilst the technology strategy is driven by the themes contained in the last two slides, it is also essential that the strategy is relevant to the marketplace so that technologies are ready to be exploited when they are needed. We therefore adjust the strategy to remain in line with the market outlook as it develops from time to time. This slide shows our view of likely product developments over the next 20 years, covering the different aviation market segments and including new forms of mobility as well. This represents a pre-COVID view. It remains too early to judge how this picture may need to be revised in the light of the pandemic. All of the segments undergo significant developments over the next 15 years, particularly around the move to electric or hybrid electric propulsion and autonomous operations. To translate these strategic drivers into technologies for the marketplace, the strategy looks at four areas of opportunity for the UK specifically related to aircraft. Future aircraft, i.e. 
whole aircraft concepts and integration, propulsion and power, advanced systems, and aero structures. These are all areas where the UK has strong capabilities. In addition, the strategy identifies cross-cutting capabilities essential to success in the other areas. Each of these areas demonstrates a high level of ambition leading towards a future position very different from the reality today. For example, the target in propulsion and power is all battery and fuel cell flight. And in advanced systems, the target is autonomous systems. The previous slide showed the technology objectives from the strategy domain by domain. The route to achieving those objectives is set out by a series of technology roadmaps, which are also contained in the strategy. These give more detail about the intermediate technology steps that will need to be taken along the way to meeting the ultimate targets of the strategy and when they need to be taken by. The ATI has prepared various additional deep dive reports about some of the individual technology areas covered in the roadmaps. These are titled Insight Reports and can be found on the ATI website. I now move on from discussing the strategy to looking at the activities we carry out to realise the strategy. Most of this involves shaping and supporting collaborative R&D projects carried out in industry and academia, but there are other activities too. I will spend a bit of time on this slide. The main activity for ATI has been the strategic programme, which is the column on the left of this slide. This is where major projects are undertaken, putting in place the building blocks for future success. Headline activities here are projects such as Rolls-Royce's Ultrafan and Airbus's Wing of Tomorrow. But there are many other projects achieving similar step changes in other domains, such as Apricone in the area of fast design or Sectair in the area of software development. The ATI's developing programme of projects on electric propulsion also sits within the strategic programme. And this is the vehicle that invests in major R&D infrastructure, which I will talk about later. But many projects in the strategic programme are led by smaller players too. And there are many opportunities for organisations throughout the sector, and indeed in other sectors, to get involved in these projects as partners or subcontractors. There is a call every month for the strategic programme. Moving to the next column, R&D funding for smaller business is a programme aimed at supporting smaller companies to lead sub £1 million projects. Calls for this programme are less frequent and we expect the next one to be in the autumn. The third column on this slide refers to the National Aerospace Technology Exploitation Programme, or NATEP. Although this is paid for out of the ATI budget, it is administered by ADS and there is a separate webinar uh, in Farnborough Connect this week devoted to it, which you may also want to listen to. NATEP is aimed at companies that are inexperienced at R&D and provides significant help in shaping projects and providing links to potential customers for the technology developed. There are generally two NATEP calls per year, with the next one planned for this autumn. Finally, moving on to the right, finally under the ATI itself, uh, there is a growing programme of collaborative R&D with other countries under the Eureka banner. So far, two calls have been held with Sweden and a call with Canada is under development. International collaboration helps to plug capability gaps in the UK and helps UK firms to enter international supply chains, amongst other advantages. Turning now to the three columns on the right of this slide, these are not part of the ATI R&D programme, but they are closely aligned to it. The ATI Boeing Accelerator offers a development opportunity and an equity investment to startups in the sector. Recruiting for the next Accelerator cohort is expected to begin later in 2020. And moving on to the next column, this refers to the Future Flight Challenge managed by Innovate UK, 
as part of the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund. This is a five-year programme to model the potential future air transport system, embracing new forms of mobility, such as autonomous aircraft, infrastructure required for green aircraft, and air traffic management systems able to cope with much greater complexity in the air. And then to the last column, finally on the right of this slide, the UK has been an active participant in EU funding initiatives, such as Clean Sky. And the government's objective is to enable this participation to continue after the end of the Brexit transitional period in December. The ATI will work with the EU side to help UK entities take part in future EU programmes. Now this whole slide represents a very dynamic picture as new ideas are being developed all the time. As I said in relation to the last slide, the funding landscape represents a dynamic picture as new ideas are developed all the time. This slide bears that out well as it relates to a new ATI initiative called Fly Zero launched only on Monday this week, the 20th of July, by the Secretary of State for Business, Alok Sharma. The government is supporting the initiative with £15 million. Fly Zero stems from a recognition that the aerospace industry is in a very challenging position at the moment due to COVID-19. But equally, the recovery from the crisis should see a marked shift towards more sustainable air travel. The ATI is therefore launching a project to second a team of around 100 experts from industry and academia to investigate the technical and commercial feasibility of different net zero aircraft concepts, their designs, their associated sources of power and the technologies needed in order to make them a reality. We believe that this project can create valuable insights and accelerate thinking across the spectrum of aerospace disciplines that would be unlikely to take place otherwise at this time and create an asset for the industry in the future. Following its initial phase, expected to last around 12 months, we hope that the conclusions reached will provide a basis for the UK to take an active lead in the design and production of zero emission aircraft. The ATI is keen to hear from organisations interested in seconding staff to the Fly Zero project. Please visit our website, which has a dedicated area for Fly Zero, register your interest and look out for information concerning a webinar to be held in August, which will be the next main information download on the project. So where has all this activity got so far? At the time of recording, 303 projects have launched to date, some of which have already finished. Together, they represent an investment of £2.6 billion, half funded by government grants and half funded by industry. Almost 340 partners are active in the R&D portfolio, including over 200 SMEs and participants are drawn from all over the UK, as the map in the centre of this slide shows. Whilst the previous slide captures the main statistical high points of the ATI programme, this slide gives a more direct sense of the sort of work supported by the ATI. It shows a small selection of 33 projects undertaken in the strategic programme. I will not go through them individually, but bringing them together in this way demonstrates the high level of ambition inherent in them, as well as the very broad scope of the projects, which include manufacturing technology, a wide variety of technologies specific to aircraft components, and investment in capital projects as well, which I discuss more in the next slide. As I mentioned earlier, an important element of the R&D programme is to invest in technology infrastructure to improve capability for all 
and to support multiple technology developments. Some of the main investments are captured on this slide. They represent world-class facilities designed to give UK organisations a boost in capability, as well as attracting investment from overseas. Most of them are in universities, catapults and other research organisations. Some of them are in companies. All of the projects in the ATI technology portfolio can be seen on the ATI website, providing information about the technologies being developed, the partners, the size of the project, the timing, and so forth. There are also full case studies about many of the projects. Please have a browse. So summarising what I've said so far, this slide, progress snapshot, brings together the totality of ATI activity, including creating the strategic underpinning at the bottom left of the slide, the R&D programme at the top of the slide, and activities to support disruptive technologies, supply chain development, international events, and network building. The HI programme represents a major investment by the UK government in the aerospace sector. The economic value that the programme is expected to contribute to the UK is also significant due to the high value added nature of aerospace and the scale of the industry in the UK. Aerospace technology also delivers considerable value to other sectors such as automotive, marine, railways and materials through technology spillovers. A pre-COVID estimate was that the ATI programme would deliver total value of £114 billion by 2035. It remains to be seen if this will need to be revised in the light of the, of the pandemic. Finally, I hope that this webinar has been interesting for you. The ATI is always keen to hear from people active in aerospace technology. If you wish to follow up about the technology strategy, about funding, about future events to discuss an idea, or just to find out more about the ATI, please refer to the many resources on our website or contact us by email by writing to info at ati.org.uk. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of Farnborough Connect week.